Okay, thank you, Trevor. Well, I just pray that this is spirit led and the Lord speaks through me as I give this to you guys with humility and love. Uh, so, this is my baptism testimony. What is baptism? In my own words, this is what I believe a baptism should be. This is not scriptural, this is not biblical, so don't add this to your doctrine. Open up your Bibles for yourselves and read all the scriptures about baptism. So you become dependent on God's word and not just his vessels. In my own words, I repeat in my own words, baptism is a cleansing, a purification, a transformation, a death to the old, and a birthing into the new. It's becoming a new creation in Christ yet again. It's another step in my sanctification process to grow in the Lord, a washing away of impurities and sins, the known and the unknown. It's a purification of the spirit, soul, mind, and body. A piece of me that doesn't glorify God is dying, being buried, and left behind in that water. And behold, a new creation in Christ shall arise. Now, I rebuke self-righteousness because baptized are not freshly saved or saved for years and spiritually mature. We all fall short of the glory of God, not intentionally, not on purpose, but due to ignorance. I don't believe in greasy grace, and neither does God. I believe we all need to repent and walk out our salvation with fear and trembling, or we too will likewise perish. What I'm saying is that none of us can save ourselves and us as a body of Christ, and we put our faith, our salvation, our trust back into Jesus and His Word, because we are only mortal vessels who push forth the real Savior. So tear down your idols and raise up Jesus. And if Jesus, who happens to be the potter, says to the clay, get baptized, then we as the clay should listen to the one who wants to mold us into perfection, because He created us and knows what's best. Romans 6, 4, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So baptism to me represents a death, burial, and resurrection that takes place in the spirit rather than the physical one that Jesus went through. When we enter the water, something dies off in the spirit. Whether it's impurities, sins, strongholds, bondage, or other things we need deliverance from, known and unknown. And all of that forever is buried in the water. And that washing, that cleansing, resurrects the spirit. Death, burial, and resurrection, but in the spirit. Can you share a few important events in your life which showed you that God was calling you to follow Him? When everything let me down, God was knocking. Everyone let me down, God was knocking. When selfishness, pride, and self-exaltation was excluded from the equation, God was knocking. When my own sovereignty failed, God was knocking. When the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life lost its appetite, God was knocking. And one day I allowed Him in through prayer when I was broken, in despair, and fed up with the enemy and his devices. And ever since that day, it's been an ongoing spiritual pull Thanks to the Holy Spirit. Is there a recent event in your life which has really made you want to be baptized? Yes, reading this scripture right here, Mark 16, 15. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick people and they will get well. I believe Jesus Christ. I have. This is not self-righteousness. This is just boosting your faith. I have cast out demons out of others and I've done self-deliverance as well. I have placed my hands on sick people and they have recovered. Glory to God, we all have this power. It just takes spiritual maturity and faith. I developed the gift of tongues. I have picked up snakes with my bare hands at a pet store once. You know you're very strong. That is actually so strong. The force is just like completely taking my arm back. That's, that's what that is. <laughs> oh God. There we go. Good old anchor hold around your throat. Mm, I love how it makes that sound. Yeah. Oh god. It just like hissed all the way up my ear. God, that was creepy. <laughs> Sounded like the devil. <laughs> No, I was married to that. Uh, it's cool. I definitely wouldn't want that as a pet, though. Not want that in my house. It's not for everyone. Sometimes you're like, yeah, I'm comfortable with this thing. Like, it's nice, but if you mess up its diet and you do something improper. Yeah. And I have drank our local lake water, which is technically a deadly poison. <laughs> <laughs> and I fully recovered, but I haven't gotten baptized, so that's one thing I need to do. 
But keep in mind, all of that means nothing if you don't have love and a repentant heart. Share a Bible verse which is special to you and why it's meaningful. Every Bible verse which contains a promise, there's 7,487. It's meaningful because no matter the climate, no matter what direction this world moves in, no matter what opposition you may be facing, God will take you through it. God will move you around it. God will preserve you in it. And God will give you the strength to overcome it just to fulfill His promises, which are good. Because God is not a man, so He does not lie. He is not human, so He does not change His mind. Heaven is God's throne and earth is His footstool. And that's the God we serve, so it's encouraging and it's a blessing. Share one area of weakness in your life and what you are asking God and your church family to help you grow stronger. Complete and total surrender to God's will for my life. Number two, having the fruits of the Spirit in every circumstance. Number three, continual obedience in every situation. Number four, to speak the full truth of God and be the salt and light that He has called us to be. Share a favorite song of yours and why it's meaningful. Um, we Want Revival Now by Catherine Mullins. Um, let's sing to it, let's worship to it as a body, and it will unveil why it's meaningful. It's meaningful because we want revival now, and it's meaningful because so does God. So, this is the song that I chose. Yeah, actually, actually just uh, I, I didn't realize when you sent that new song this morning that it was changing out. But so, so the other, the one that you requested first is the one that's up there. But it's also a song you worshipped and and praised to, right? Okay. Yeah. Know. Okay. Let's go with. Hopefully, I know the words. Dear brothers, teachers, I stand here breathless. Yeah, all totally blown my mind with all that you've done with my life. You surpassed my every dream, opened up my eyes to see. Love is so much better than my life. You leave me in awe. You leave me in awe. 
it's just so good to hear, like I say, uh, every, the details of every testimony is different, but the fundamental um, storyline is the same, right? We come to a place where we realize that, uh, that if we are the Lord of our own lives, it will not go where it was created to go. And uh, I, I think I heard that coming out of each of the testimonies. So um, we're going to uh, finish today with a song that is uh, kind of a tradition in this church uh, for every time we do baptisms. Uh, this song says, to the river I'm going. Uh, we're going to leave it as to the river. We won't say to the swimming pool. It just doesn't sound as <laughs> noble. But, uh, but imagine that as we sing this. So uh, 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 hopefully you could just uh, you can uh, relate to this, this moment and this uh, occasion for these uh, three new friends that we have. Let's stand together and sing to the river. Jesus' name, amen. All right. 